on the evening of November the 5th, bonfire night, we were expecting a busy night. We hadn't had too many calls up until the uh, time we got a call at half past ten. Um, we were called to a building fire uh, within the Danes House area. Uh, one of our highest category of calls, which meant that we sent both our fire engines from Burnley. Um, as we approached the area, we turned onto the street where we believe the fire was, and we saw uh, motorbikes weaving and we thought something wasn't right, at which point we had a couple of fireworks fired at us. Driving around uh, a bend, going towards an incident, and being met with fireworks coming straight at the car, which then uh, flew over the windscreen and luckily uh, went past us. But uh, yeah, it's quite fearful, really. You know, uh, uh, a bit of a shock. They got attacked. Um, we got sent back into Abel Street after a hoax call was called to say there was a person on fire in the road. Um, our job was to sort of get eyes on to see whether it was a hoax or not. Uh, and at that point, we got surrounded by approximately 40 or 50 um, people. On our arrival, we didn't even have a chance to get out of the van and we started getting fireworks fired at our van. One blew up on the windscreen right in front of me. Um, there was some bouncing off, there was some going off into the, the rest of the crowd. We were getting rockets fired at the car. Bricks came through the windows, and as I say, we were, we were sort of um, surrounded by them, so we were blocked in. So yeah, it was a, a scary moment. We, we found last year there was particularly quite a few hoax calls, uh, and they're, they're usually quite emotive ones as well. With the ambulance service in particular, we have to go into those calls. We have to go to make sure that it's not what they're saying. I can't even. Ambulance service is a patient breathing. Is the patient breathing? No. Can you tell me exactly what's happened? Fireworks hit him in his face, he just knocked out. Pardon? We're on we're Lambert Street, we've called a few times, we're getting like scared now, he's gone all cold, I'm pale. Okay, tell me exactly what's happened. So there's a bunch of lads, they shot a firework at us and it hit my mate in the face, and now he's just dropped on the floor and he's not waking up. Okay. He's been hit in the face with a firework. Yeah, big firework. Just putting those details in now. Alright, can you come down the street as soon as possible? Uh, I'm, a ve I'm a very worried. Okay, we're just putting, we're putting these details in now. And he's not breathing. Hello, are you still there? Hello? Listen to that call, it makes me angry, it makes me sick. Um, people can come up with those sort of excuses to lure emergency services into the situations that they face. Um, not only are they calling us, they're actually making up stories about horrendous things um, to, to our highest priority calls to, to get us there and ultimately attack us. And it's, it just beggars belief that someone could do that. Talking to the crews who went to the incident, that's what they felt after was anger. Anger that what they came to work to do was not what they did, they were attacked. And that stayed with them since, you know, because they were there ready to go and help someone. And what they got was somebody attacking them and having absolutely no respect for what they do. For me personally, I, I won't forget the night, you know, it was a new sort of um, scenario for me. Uh, it was something slightly different to what to what my normal role is, but it's something I'll never forget. And because we're dealing with this, 
that means we're not then available to actually deal with the people who are in cardiac arrest, who are having a heart attack and a stroke. These are the people that need us quickly and these are the people that need an early response to stop their condition progressing, the heart attack into cardiac arrest, the stroke where they become disabled. It's just not worth it for them two minutes of having a laugh with your mates. Um, it's just not worth it and like I say, weeks down the line when we're coming through your house to arrest you um, or even at your school in front of your teachers and your mates, they'll all be laughing when you're getting carted away and they're still in school. If this gets to court, then obviously we're looking at criminal convictions, which then affects your future.